Hello everyone, welcome back to Gent Watches. Today I am in an Audi, which means I'm comfortable instead of just being uncomfortable and not wearing an Audi. Um, and today I'm going to be watching season two of Rent a Girlfriend. So, Rent a Girlfriend, let's, before, because I haven't done this show on this channel yet, but I did watch season one when it came out. And, um, and I think I should go over my thoughts on it so that people are caught up on what I think about Rent a Girlfriend before they see me watch this episode. Um, I am not, uh, blind to audience reactions to certain things. I know that, uh, this is a very weird show in the anime and manga community because it is a very popular, um, manga and anime that is also like I I don't see much uh, positive written about it and and shown about it you know um, even though like generally I this feels like the reality show of of anime in that like a lot of people watch it and go like yeah it's garbage but it's you I can't look away like that's the sort of uh, idea behind this show is that it is and uh, I'm talking about other people's opinions here right um that it is like a car crash in slow motion um that it's like it's so sort of like trashy and bottom of the barrel that uh that it's you can't help but but watch it um so that's the that seems like the general consensus of of what the show is um I also know that the manga is particularly like dunked upon because I don't read it, but I do read stuff like Nagatoro. I read uh, Blue Box. I read like a bunch of other uh, manga enough that I always see people referencing the Rent a Girlfriend manga as being an example of a manga uh, just being not only dragged on but like constantly never progressing. So, um,. So with me, right? I watched the first season. I enjoyed the first season. I thought it was th thought it was pretty entertaining. Um, I liked some of the stuff that they did with the characterization. I uh, and you know I think I am like I mean it's been so long since I like I watched it when it came out and that feels like ages ago now that I actually can't remember my exact opinions on a lot of the things that happened and a lot of the people in it. Um, but, I mean, generally, as a show that you just, like, watch casually every week, like, I would never, uh, like, un unless something huge changes, um, I probably wouldn't, like, go out and say to people, like, you have to watch Rent-A-Girlfriend. But, um, but I still found enjoyment out of it. And so I still am probably going to continue watching this, uh, this season. I think I've also heard that the stuff upcoming in the manga is sort of, like, the best it gets. And then after that is when it starts going badly. So maybe this season is going to be like, yeah, better stuff. And then it might start getting worse. But I'm not going to let other people's opinions of stuff taint my views of the situation. I'm just watching this show. I mean, look, to be honest, there's a bunch of cute girls in the show. If you just watch it for the cute girls, you'll probably get enough entertainment out of it already. So that's fine with me. Um, so I know we have Kazuya, Chizuru, Mami, and Sumi were the main girls and, and the, um, yeah, those were the main girls. Wait, did I just name Kazuya as one of the, the girls or did I not? Uh, then I know there's Kazuya, Chizuru, Mami, uh, oh, what's the, Ruka and Sumi. There we go. Those are the five main characters. Um, Sumi, not really a main character, but she's, she's, in the in the show in some capacity um and uh and so yeah just generally Kazuya is you know he's he's obviously like pathetic and and such you know a, a, a pretty you know pathetic character that's his main character trait but um I, I don't mind him too much as a protagonist I know that it's like frustrating watching him but like I think for a show like this like you can't have you know this amazingly forward incredible protagonist so i'm fine with him as a protagonist um chizuru is great obviously um that's most people's uh, attachment to the show is because of chizuru um mami is honestly a pretty solid villain and uh kind of kind of fun to watch a little bit um uh rook is cute 
Don't have much to say about Ruka. She's cute and fun, and Sumi is very, very cute. I wish we saw more of her, but I know that she is kind of put to the side in this series. So... Anyway, with that, those are all the things, all my summary of Rent-A-Girlfriend Season 1. Um, so we're getting into Season 2 today. It's weird because this is, I think this is supposed to be Season 2, Episode 1, but on Crunchyroll they've named it Episode 13 of Season 1. So I don't know if that's a mistake or if that's actually, like, this is actually technically the second part of the first season. Feels weird. I feel like I would have heard about that, but maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, let's get into Rent-A-Girlfriend Season 2, Episode 1. Oh, are they giving me a summary? I, I just watched, I just watched a, a summary of the show, <laughs> so like to remind myself. So I guess I wasted all that time. Oh, are they giving? Oh, they're giving summaries from everyone's perspective, I guess. Why is she holding a gun? <laughs> okay, Sumi, how much, how much do you have to recap? Okay. Oh. New OP. The first season OP was awesome. Nice. I like this one so far. <laughs> it's nice they're keeping with the the dance thing in the OP. I love it. Okay, decent. There are bits that I really like. Way above and beyond. Uh, probably. I mean, the scouts will probably be looking for acting ability as well. I mean, you don't have to think about it in... Yeah, okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Using a real name. I guess that makes sense. You don't want to use the name of your... Your uh, rent a girlfriend persona. Damn, nice photos. What is that? What was that? I guess that must be in like a, a famous theater. That must be the. It's like in Haiku, they always show that thing on the wall that's really weird. Don't be nervous. Actors use the nerves as, uh, as energy. Well, at least I do. And I'm pretty sure most do. <gasps> Sumi! <laughs> Speak up, girl. Damn, I like her hair. Why do you think it was Mizuhara? Are you just like jumping at <laughs> every girl who comes on stage? Yeah, okay, he's just constantly thinking about her. Oh, yeah. Forgot about him. This is her, right? Nice. <laughs> it's okay. Relax, she's supposed to be here. Is she throwing that into the audience? <laughs> so she's the comic relief character. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Her expressions are very good. See, I like this girl. I would cast her if I was the director in the audience. The main, I know she's the main character, but. Oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be what makes everyone cry. The fan favorite character dying. Damn, she's acting up a storm. I mean, it's much easier to get an audible reaction from the audience when you're a comic relief character. So you don't actually know if she was the star of the show. Sumi, speak up! No! Get back there, girl! 
What is she? What's her thing say? I see F and A. I think it's F and A. Aw, you just have to be proud of yourself. Hey, I mean, she was good too. Let's not take away from her acting job just because Chizuru was great. Man, so she really... She really thought that she would be the one, you know, to get the full attention of the director. Sometimes plays can just lead to more plays. And pure exposure will also get you to success. They're both mourning the losses of what they wanted. <laughs> See, I also think he probably thinks she was better than she was because he likes her so much. <laughs> Yeah, he's part of the public. He can do it. <laughs> She's getting some recognition at least. <laughs> Aww. Was that guaranteed? Or did she just see them and assume that? I feel like she's got to get more roles from that at least. Nineteen, man. So much pressure on yourself for a nineteen-year-old. <laughs> yeah, I'm jerking off in my room and you're going out and performing in plays. Oh! The first season's OP. This is a weird scene to have credits over, isn't it? <laughs> Aww. She appreciated it. Don't worry. Aww. Well, she was being sweet, at least. Hopefully she doesn't turn off the phone and turn into mommy, you know. Received a date request. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aquarium lad. <laughs> oh my god, he's, <laughs> he's doing a bunch at once. Come on, guy. Like, just do one at a time. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> All right. I mean, this is kind of exactly what you'd expect from the first episode back of, of Rent-A-Girlfriend. There's, I mean, nothing super special happening there. It's just like business as usual. Um, but, uh, but you know, we're, we're seeing now the... Chizuru's got a goal in mind. She's got something that she's striving for. So that does give the show some driving force to it. Because if we want... If we want her to be happy, which I'm sure, like, that's the main, you know, especially since a lot of people, when watching this show, say that they're watching for Chizuru and they, they hate Kazuya, you know? Um, so if, if Chizuru is your driving force, and if the, the author knows that people don't like Kazuya as much as they like Chizuru, um, then you want the goal of the series to be more Chizuru based and I mean the, I guess the goal of the series is really for them to get together Chizuru and, and um, Kazuya because that seems like you know the the main goal of a romance thing but I mean really having Chizuru succeed in, with her acting career and achieve her dream um, would be a an actual uh, an actual goal for, for this show, you know, like a, a goal that we can root for pretty easily that doesn't actually require Kazuya. Um, Kazuya doesn't seem to be supporting in the ways of giving her, you know, tips on acting or anything. He is purely moral support and financial support. <laughs> um, because I, 
I how much how did I, I guess he works at the karaoke bar, right? So that's how he makes his money. He must make good money. Or I guess maybe not that he makes good money, but rather he spends all of his money on Chizuru and that's it. Um But I mean he still has to feed himself and he still has to live. Um so he gives a lot of money to Chizuru. Like he it it she must be literally his only his only other Unless she's like super cheap, which I don't think she is. I mean, she's the number one rental girlfriend, right? So uh, she she she's got to be pretty expensive at least. Um, so yeah, huge surprise that he's always able to constantly book her, and at the end of the episode, booked her like three or four times uh, at once. You know, um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, uh, yeah, we had. Did we have any mommy this episode? I can't remember. Uh, uh, I don't think so, right? No mommy this episode and no Ruka this episode. So it was just uh, Chizuru and Kazuya and then that smidge of Sumi. I'm not quite sure. I mean, it. I did not, like I just basically watched a quick recap of season one um, to remind myself what happened, but like, you know, the Sumi stuff was so small in the grand scheme of things that I didn't take it fully into account. So I'm not sure what the purpose of the Sumi moment was because it seemed like, you know, she was bringing herself to talk to him and then she looked at him and was like, like had a thought in her head and then left satisfied, right? I guess... Like, she wanted to speak up because she wanted to talk to him and, and, like, you know, connect with him for a bit. But then, if I had to guess, just based on that moment, that moment was she saw him and what she saw was him sort of being, having the bliss and satisfaction of being in the moment, of having just experienced she's at his acting. And she didn't want to take that away from him. Like, he was in the zone, he was, um... He was sort of basking in Chizuru's light in that moment, and so she decided to not, uh, to to not interrupt that, and that, you know, she could just go away. If that's the case, is there a point to her being in that scene? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe just so that we can see her. Um, I just, if we see Sumi, I wanna, I wanna see her do stuff. You know, I, I wanna, I wanna properly get some some Sumi content, and I know that there's not much. I'm pretty sure there's also, like, a small spin-off with her, but it's not, like, a pro a full manga. It's just, like, a... Like, it's probably a few chapters or something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I like Sumi a lot, and, I mean, I just... I really want to see more of her, but... You know, we can't all get what we want. Um, but, yeah. Ni nice enough episode, you know? Um, the OP's pretty good. I think the OP... I like the bits that are like, you know, the dance moves that are, that all the girls are doing and they're leading into one another. Like, that was probably the best part of the first OP as well. And the song's pretty good. I think the in-between bits, between those moments, um, were kind of, like, nothing. And I mean, I can't quite remember the visuals of Season 1 other than the dances. Um, but the thing about Season 1 is it was a song by the Peggy's. And so it didn't matter what the visuals were. Like... Centimeter by the Peggy's is an incredible song. Um, maybe this song is really good as well. I have only heard it once. I need to hear it uh, at least several times. I like the bit where it picked up um, and and had the Kazuya running. I wish this is this is the only thing that I wanted out of that moment though. I wish he wasn't running on a white background. I wish they actually put a background in there because I think like I think if you're gonna have a build up like that and like a really cool breakdown moment. Having a character, like, do a run cycle on a white background isn't, like, the climax that I want. The climax that I want is, like, you know, if he was running through the streets or something, you know? Um, or, like, running down the apartment block towards the door or something. Like, I think that would be a more satisfying-looking climax of the OP for me. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, I mean, that was what you would expect from a Season 2, Episode 1 of Rent a Girlfriend. Nothing special, nothing detrimental. Um, I, and, I mean, plot-wise, not much really happened. It just showed us what Mitsuhara is doing and showed us that um, she's not quite succeeding in her career as much as she had hoped she would after one play. So let's uh, just 
wait till the next episode, see how the storyline progresses, especially when the other girls start being thrown into the mix. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. If you're new to this channel, and you might be because this is a new series, um, thank you for joining me. If you liked this video, make sure to click like on the video. Um, comment down below if you liked the episode, if you liked the reaction, if you have any suggestions for the channel. Any of your thoughts can go in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, it really helps me out, helps you out, and you'll get to know when new videos are posted, not just of this series, but of every series. So it's definitely worth subscribing to help grow the channel. But thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.